Okay, so hi guys, fellow researchers and dear friends, welcome to the channel. And today is our first episode of Research Cast, uh, which brings researchers from different walk of lives, from different backgrounds, artificial intelligence, machine learning, biology, physics, chemistry, mathematics, archaeology, uh, everything under the sun. And the main motive of starting this podcast was that uh, Obviously, we also want to improve ourselves, uh, undoubtedly, but uh, along with that, we also want to tell others that how things are achieved, especially in our country, because what we have experienced, it is difficult. And initially, we didn't have access to uh, podcasts like these, which we are uh, intending to start, right? So that is the reason. Uh, that is the motive and that is why we are here to do this thing and uh, in our first episode uh, we have Shivam uh, from Gautam Buddha University uh, whose background is in artificial intelligence and machine learning and he is currently working in microgenesis as a software engineer just graduated from uh, his university in uh, July and uh, worked on a project in a DRDU and that is what we are going to talk about how he got a paid internship in DRDU which is a rare achievement in itself uh, and a package which anyone would any uh, one would envy uh, at the start of his career so that is this podcast is all going to about so welcome Shivam uh, how are you? <laughs> Yeah, I'm very well. Thanks for inviting me first of all to the first podcast. I've been a big fan of this YouTube channel since I watched that famous video of boss viewer visualizations. And um, firstly, I'd like to uh, tell that this person with whom I'm talking right now, I just, you know, <clears throat> while searching for YouTube itself, I came across this video. So I, I didn't know that... Uh, Mr. Shivam is uh, one of my seniors in GU, but the, uh, the it was like uh, I I had no thought that this video, the man who's made this video is actually from my college itself. So when I clicked the video, after you know watching it for like ten to fifteen seconds, he gave the intro and he said, "I'm from Gautam Buddha University." So I was like, "Wow, man, this is so great because I can connect with this person and maybe the connection would be." you know, mutual as we are from the same college. So then there, after watching the video, the was so good, you want to know. Um, and I immediately connected with him on Gmail and the reply or the response was very good. Uh, we connected this long that we have come here. Uh, and <clears throat> as per my education, he already told me that I have done my BTEC in electronics and communication engineering. It is an integrated code basically. I did my BTEC in PC and then after I did my MTEC in artificial intelligence and robotics. So uh, the thing is, at that, as a part of my dissertation in the last semester of my MTEC, I did a project in collaboration with DRDU, Care Laboratory. Care Laboratory means a Center for Artificial Intelligence and Robotics, which is based in Bangalore. So <clears throat> while working there, uh, I did a project related to voice command interface um, for a department of DRD. Though I can't uh, reveal much of uh, the information regarding it, but I'll surely uh, get into the nitty gritties of it uh, uh, from the from above the level. So basically, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, what, well, what is the reason behind not giving out the information? Uh, and uh, uh, information is limited to what? If you could explain. Yeah, the thing is actually um, DRDO itself is an organization wherein things are happening uh, in a very confidential ways. And you must have seen yeah. or uh, witnessed it in oh. this news channels. Hmm. So the thing is, um, we can't discuss the you know uh, integral part of the system wherein the applications have been used. Though we can discuss the application part, but we can't go in depth to the uh, system part. Okay. Because the system, self-made systems and all, 
So we can't discuss in depth of that uh, okay. in this video. We're sharing the applications and uh, all the you know sources from which I learned about that project. And in, in fact, Vosphere is also a part of my DRDO research. Um, it, it plays a role in uh, visualization plays a role in a part of my dissertation. So okay. We'll discuss on that. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Shivam, uh, why uh, am taking artificial intelligence and robotics? Uh, why did you choose to do that? Yeah, this is a very good question and close to my heart also. So, while I was doing my BTEC in electronics and communication engineering, I opted for it actually. So, the reason was that I wanted to ha have it both ways. And you can say at that time, when I just passed 12, I wanted to know the uh, electronics part of uh, any technology that is uh, upcoming. And the thing is, if uh, I had this in my mind actually, if I know the uh, electronics part of any technology, mm -hmm. and if I know machine learning part of any technology, then I can very well, very well uh, you know, curate ideas for the robotics uh, part of the uh, upcoming technology. Because if a person knows the hardware knowledge, if a person knows the software knowledge, that's what compiles and brings you to the electronics and artificial intelligence world. So uh, at the end, the masters, which, which was part of the integrated course, it was helping me out somewhere, the EC part, because in the robotics part, uh, there was some role, some prerequisites of EC required. Okay. So that's the reason I did this integrated one, wherein I wanted a knowledge of software also, which I got from MTech in soft artificial intelligence and robotics. And the hardware knowledge also came into play uh, EC uh, uh, because of uh, this uh, robotics part. Um, so yeah, this was the main reason to opt this particular sector. Okay. And that is how you came into the uh, information about the DRDO care lab. Um, yeah, actually uh, what happened is uh, we we had to uh, we knew that uh, we had to do the dissertation um, with our uh, college professors or there was also an option where you can opt for uh, uh, doing your dissertation uh, of masters from any organizations. So that time I was just searching out okay. that what are my other chances if I want to work in any with any organization. Mm -hmm. What are my other chances? So that's when I got to know that. Okay, people do uh, their dissertation in collaboration with uh, organ such organizations. Where I got to know about the audio, then I researched about it, how to get into it, and all. So that's where I got to know that, yeah, uh, because working uh, under the guidance of such um, big scientists uh, in uh, such prestigious laboratories of the audio in itself are a great thing. Yeah. Uh, please, if you could tell this thing in detail, how you approach uh, the process, the internship and uh, how what was the process and how you got that uh, into contact with the scientist, how you choose that and why only that project which you worked upon. And also, please uh, explain the your project part, uh, whatever in, uh, information you can give. Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, the DRDO, um, you know, the I'll let you know the phases, um, how you can get into DRDO, how you can apply for it. So the first thing is basically, um, you need to send a mail uh, to the respective um, uh, DRDO organization, you know, care or like my organization was care. So okay. you can send the mail to the director, okay, of that organization, uh, of that laboratory, to be precise. So uh, you have to give your CV and you have to give them your introduction. Like why do you want to work with them and on what projects you are interested to work with and on what subjects or domains you want to work with. Okay, so okay. all these things should also be included in your CV and should also be included in the body of your name. Okay, so in, in this is basically, you know, you want to convince them that why do they uh, take you as as a part of uh, you know your dedication? What good you are to them? So that's how you have to prove them through mail. Once you send that mail to the director, um, what happens is uh, the mail gets circulated 
from uh, director's office to several scientists or you can say several department in that particular laboratory. So whichever scientist can relate to your CV and can you know have the satisfaction that okay this person is what I need for my research ongoing research also and this person is like the best best fit for me. So that particular scientist would take your resume and uh, you know uh, uh, the scientist PA or anyone would give you a call if you if the scientist is interested. Okay. So that call might go to several other candidates also who is applied and the scientist is interested. Okay. So what happens is uh, scientists, uh, the, the PA calls you and uh, like in my case, she called me and she said that we have set an interview uh, with, uh, with the scientist and they'll be calling you. So uh, then after the scientist calls you and uh, there is there's no, there's no such length uh, because it can be for you know 10 minutes uh, to like one hour. So in that interview, basically a scientist gets to know that whatever you have written in your CV, you genuinely are that person or not. The concepts that uh, you, you are talking about, you have some knowledge about that or not. And if you have done some remarkable work in your college, so that is the cherry on the cake, you know, because that's what they need. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've just wanted to ask that uh, if there is a student <coughs> who is watching this and he wants to make that CV. So how, what is the format? of that CV, is, is there something specific to mention? Uh, some keywords or what is the, uh, what is the format basic? Yeah, so the thing is, um, first of all, you have to decide which laboratory you want to do. Okay, for, for me, it was Center for Artificial Intelligence and Robotics Laboratory of the So uh, in that, you have to see which particular domain you are interested in. For example, I was interested in natural language processing. Okay. So you have to give, you know, pointers in your view that these are the respective domains you are interested in. So I gave two to three domains. And uh, secondly, if you're not sure about that domain right now, just go to the DRDS page. And there they, they have generally the uh, bio section, at least they have given some pointers wherein the research is going on. Okay. So you can pick those pointers and you can use that in your mail that these are the pointers where I feel that I am fit because that way they can relate with you that okay if the research is going on in this field then yeah very well this person can if the person is interested then we have a position or opportunity for him, okay for her so that is the thing you can do it this way and um, as far as the resume is concerned there is no such superficial thing that you have to add in the resume. Whatever you have done, just add that. Uh, whatever conceptual knowledge you have gained, then just add that. Uh, so yeah, sorry for the disturbance, guys. Uh, we are amateur in this field. So please bear with us. Yeah, uh, Shivam, uh, please start where you left out. You were just telling about the uh, CV. Yeah. 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 So basically, I was telling about the resume uh, and uh, what all things you need to add. So yeah, the conceptual knowledge is required and uh, whatever skills you have gained till now, just be honest and be confident on that part. You should know what you are writing in that one single piece of paper. That's it. You don't have to worry about anything. And whichever field you are interested in, if you are, your skills relate to that field, that will be you know a boon for them. Yeah, that's about resume. Okay. And uh, please tell us about your project work. Yeah, so basically uh, when I got uh, admitted to DRDO as part of my dissertation, so I got into one of the projects uh, where I had to build a voice command interface for a uh, geospatial department in DRDO. So basically what it was is like we use Siri and Alexa right, right now, right? So it was basically a voice interface uh, which could uh, work two ways, like a voice assistant where I can give commands and the things could happen inside the system. So that way it would be handy for the system or for the user, I'd say, uh, for the user to use that particular system and give commands in, in places where it is very difficult to use, you know, keyboard or mouse connectivity uh, or in terms of situations where one can not uh, open a system 
and uh, use the keyboard and you know mouse and all that particular enabled uh, gadgets, external gadgets. So for that purpose, we, uh, this system was built, and that was the use case of the system. So we built the system by giving the respective commands that were needed. And only the uh, the specific commands which were needed by that particular department um, on the system that that is already been built by the team. Okay. So, uh, well, what I have heard from news and articles, which I have read that DRDO always uh, uh, attached names to their project. So, uh, was there any kind of name attached to your project, interesting name or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. actually, uh, I went with that name. I constructed that myself. It was named Naksha, okay. uh, which means maps. So it was basically built for GIS a system, geospatial system. So that's what uh, that's how the name came. Naksha Virtual Assistant was the name name kept for that particular um, uh, you know project. Okay, so what uh, I have understood from this that uh, this was a voice assistant, Naksha. Uh, that if I am an army personnel and I am uh, struck in a battlefield. And uh, obviously, I am not in, a, uh, in in that uh, state of mind that I will type things because obviously I can forget or uh, uh, God forbid, but if I if I lost my hand, if I lost my fingers. So that is why that uh, in that scenario, I can use voice commands to access things. Uh, am I right? Uh, <coughs> yeah, one of the use cases that only. Um, because there are several scenarios which comprises uh, in terms of when you are in a battle scene, right? So uh, that is the reason we built this. This is one of the major use cases. And also, if we want to, another use case uh, is also that if you want to, you know, get an overview of a particular area. For example, you tell me to, uh, you know, get an overview of Ukraine, what is happening there. Okay. And if I'm not aware that uh, about that particular area, so if I tell my system, that is basically an advanced feature in that. So if I tell my system uh, that give me an overview of Ukraine, so there are a set of commands that will be present inside the system, which will uh, uh, get started and the system itself would repeat and meanwhile will show you each and every aspects like where is the army base or where is the particular um, the thing present in, in, in an area. We can't go to the integrities of that part, but there are several you know, functions which would be started when you give this command. And the third reason is uh, uh, there is, you know, because the system is somewhat query based. So what happens is if you know the query, then only the system will work. If you are not aware of the query, uh, not any other person can come and just speak and access to that particular system. So, because it is query based. So, okay. if we, uh, if we uh, give the system a particular query that is, you know, in a way, um, uh, in, uh, encrypted password. So, the other person can't access that particular system. So, if the system works totally and solely on the voice interface, then it is very difficult. For any other person, even if that person access it, gets access to it uh, illegally, that person won't be able to use it. It will be like a normal box in front of him, which he can't use and do anything with it. Okay. Uh, well, that is great. Uh, <coughs> but uh, also, uh, uh, well, uh, I would like to now, uh, what should I say? Uh, give a, uh, can you give our audience a demo of that project later on. Uh, is that possible? If you could give just a demo of what was that project, what was the uh, artificial voice of that uh, system, Naksha? Is that possible? Yeah, yeah, sure. I can give you, you know, uh, I can't show you the exact, uh, you know, model which has been implanted in the system. Yeah. Like, uh, for obvious reasons. But yeah, I can show you a prototype of that model. Um, what was our psychology while building it? So I can I can show you the base variant of our model. Okay. Uh, how we build it. Okay. 
well that would be nice because it will also help the the, the students who are currently studying to just got an overview of what how things happen in drd or how you give presentations and all so we would add i think um, because i just uh, thought that why not just add a section where you are giving a demo where you are giving a, a just a 5 minute presentation of your work simple powerpoint presentation and a demo so we will add that in the later part right okay so that was it uh, also i would like to know that uh, what were the interview questions from specific interview question which were asked to you from your field obviously uh, to students uh, of obviously background of electronics or artificial intelligence and robotics yeah yeah so basically there was a set criteria it is as per just whatever uh, he feels like uh, his requirement is mm-hmm. you might you the questions after your interest is over the scientist would ask you question according to his interest mm-hmm. because he want to know if he if he take you uh, so you should be you know um, jacks for all for that gun so you should be okay uh, okay so you should be a jack of all trades <laughs> ah right 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 so that is what uh, the thing is so basically scientist generally asks first ask uh, what is your education background and uh, what are subjects you like you might ask questions on that subject matter and after that um, you know he might ask basic just say in my field he asked me some basic a natural language processing question some basic terminologies in nlp and all it and uh, then all, then after he might ask you to send him the projects that you have done or send a ppt or a flow chart of that project in my case he asked me to send a flow chart of my earlier projects that i did so that is the way the scientists interact with you they don't give much time to you though uh, it's, it's totally up to them you know uh, whether they give like my interview was around i think uh, 15 to 20 minutes only. so he asked me general basic questions uh, flow charts and other uh, basic computer science and nlp terminology and all so that's how it happens and once it's done uh, then uh, after few days you will get a confirmation from uh, his or her pa uh, that if you are uh, selected or not. okay so what is the grade of the scientist which you are working under Yeah. So the thing is, the in DRD we start with uh, these levels or grades you can say, uh, which starts from B. Okay, scientist B is the f- first uh, gazetted position. Okay. Then after you jump on to C, D, E, F, G, and then H and I is like the distinguished scientist you can say. And then after I it comes director level. Okay. So okay. my scientist is currently a scientist G. in okay. one of the department of the okay okay so, okay. Okay. so basically you uh, 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 in turn get a project under a top scientist yeah yeah, yeah. basically yeah that is the thing because i was working under the guidance of uh, two scientists actually uh, one was a scientist g level the other was scientist f level so these were the two scientists okay uh, can you uh, if it is up to you totally if you could tell the amount uh, uh, the the internship the paid internship amount you got mm-hmm. or some stipend if you could tell us yeah so the thing is the paid internship is basically you know uh, it is a factor which comes into play uh, through um, third parties you know because if particular company is working under drdo okay uh, under the guidance of drdo then you get a chance to uh, you know collaboratively intern with that company also because that company is also invested into one of the projects of drd so what happened is when i entered the drd that time uh, i got an opportunity by my scientist himself uh, he told me that this is the opportunity if you want if you can crack the interview of that company which is working with us because it, all the scientists are working in that company Yeah, um, uh, part of not the scientists are working, but they are leading the people who are working in that company. So, if you want, you can get a pay uh, as part of a, you know as a stipend, um, which could you know help you out in Bangalore to stay and 
to live a uh, basic livelihood so yeah so that why that's why i i opted for it because anyway i was working under the guidance of both scientists only it was just that i was a part of a, a, you know a third party company also which was working in one of those projects one of the departments of that uh, drd at that time so uh, that's how i got the uh, stipend uh, i cracked that interview and then after they offered me that particular stipend yeah okay uh, is that stipend enough to survive in bangalore because bangalore is an expensive city <laughs> yeah 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 but the thing is uh, at that moment i was not fully graduated no? i was like in my college self and it was like getting selected in drdo and working under the guidance of scientists i was uh, i was not uh, worried about uh, the you know financial um, integrities of it i was more concerned about the projects and what comes with that so anyway i was getting a nominal stipend which i guess i was told that even masters student in um iits and nits get that particular stipend while they're working in their masters so it was close to that stipend so that's that's what every you know master student in iits and nits get so okay i was happy with that. i was happy with yeah, that. yeah obviously that was a bonus actually that stipend was just a bonus you were getting Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like wild card entry opportunity types. Hmm. Yeah, that is nice. Uh, also, uh, there was this one question that, uh, uh, what kind of company are working with DRDO? Uh, what are these companies? Are they startups or are they established companies? Yeah. So the thing is, um, I can tell about my laboratory, which I have seen. Okay. so uh, the thing is uh, the company with which i was collaborated is totally de- defense related company okay. that company works only on defense projects uh, be it with drdo be it with uh, uh, hcl hindustan aeronautical limited okay Now, so this this particular company was only defense centric whatever uh, it services they provide they provide to the defense okay whatever other kind of services they provide they provide to defense so defense only companies and other than that there are several you know government organizations which work with drd um so there is uh, you know bharat electronics limited they work hand in hand with drd in one some of their projects and there are several other organizations but uh, as far as i know drd in my uh, laboratory uh, there were generally government organizations uh, working hand in hand and other than that there were um, um, the company this which was defense related company so yeah because uh, other companies you know we can't just expose go and go around and expose the informations regarding uh, the laboratory so it is very risky um, for drdo to indulge with some biggies <laughs> because the you know the the information can't be outsourced or the information can't be open for all okay. so that is the thing. so how did this work with your professor in your university because obviously there should be someone <laughs> who are from your parent university which was uh, assigned as a supervisor so how was that happening because obviously your supervisor from your parent university must be asking you that what are your project how you are doing it and the progress report obviously so what was that process how how did it ended up in a master dissertation if you could tell us about that yes sir uh, so uh, my project uh, like my professor was uh, very cooperative with me and uh, 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 the the basically what he told me is you just give me a brief update every you know uh, twice a week uh, so that i can only be aligned with your uh, update uh, work update so that when i have to confront the panel i can rest assure them that this is the kind of work you are indulged in or this is basically the concepts you are working on with these these are the concept basically so i used to you know we used to sit on google meet and we used to discuss every discusses discuss it every uh, you know twice a week so uh, that's how it happened with uh, my professor and he was very cooperative and um, 
he has no, no such issue. He was even happy when I got selected in DRD uh, as part of my dissertation. And so yeah, he has he had much hope for me, which I uh, fulfilled uh, at the end of the dissertation. I believe. So. What was the uh, title of your dissertation? Yeah, so title of my dissertation was basically Voice Command Interface for GIS System. Okay. Design and implementation of Voice Command Interface for GIS System. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow, that was that was literally a, a insightful thing, man. Uh, because uh, yes, it is important to know how things work in at university level and also at this. Uh, national level, national level reputed organization. Uh, it was really a nice insight. Uh, also, uh, uh, if uh, is there some advice you want to give uh, students who are studying in their bachelors or uh, doing their post graduation that they should do, which you didn't do, or you uh, later on you got to know that uh, if I did this thing, that maybe it would be more. Uh, sm- easy or smoothly uh, done. So, if there is any advice, yeah. Yeah. Um, firstly, I'd say that um, even I am learning right now. I am in my learning stage only, so uh, I won't go into you know advance advices and all. But I would say that for the people uh, who, uh, because this is like one of my stories when I got into Gautam Buddha University. So whenever I used to tell this to anyone, so people have rarely heard of this university. But the thing is, uh, there might be some university where, uh, where any person who is watching this might be studying. And you will be worried that um, my university, no one knows about my university and uh, how can I apply for this? But I would say that if you are good with your concepts and if you have the confidence and if you are interested to go beyond, then you should definitely apply. You should never think that um, uh, like I, I am on the back seat or I am a back venture and there are several other universities who can get a chance in this organization. Why would I get? So I think that's not under your discretion. Okay. You should just, you should just apply and try and then you know, you, it depends on the other side. So you should do your work. And uh, it's, it's very easy, you know, if you, you consistently work on yourself, on your skills. It is very easy, I, I believe. And uh, the second thing is, it is, it is not predictable. You know, it is very unpredictable. So why not just apply and see? Because you, you have nothing to lose, you know. So if I can do it, <laughs> uh, because... And I can tell you your life would be changed with that because it might happen that Shivam Pan from Gautam Buddha University might not be known. But now Shivam Pan from Dhiradi is getting offer from companies. Mm. So it's it's just a matter of you know pushing yourself much. Um because there might be a downside to this. Um but now there is an upside to it. So why not apply for that? And why not give it a shot? Mm. If that tables can be turned, you might not give it a shot. So I think for those people who are in fear and who think that um, getting into such an organization is a big deal, no doubt it is a big deal, but I don't think that um, the scientists are constrained to you know give opportunities to people who think they are from uh, not, not so good college. So yeah, they would definitely give you the opportunity if you have the talent, if you have the skill set that, that they require then it's not majorly about the college even. So yeah, you should definitely apply. And you should not, uh, you know, put constraints on yourself or put filters that no. You should give other opportunities. First, give yourself opportunity, then think of other things which are happening. So yeah, that's what I would like to say. And uh, at the last, I would like to say that thank you for inviting me here. Um, because if if this helps to even a uh, one person who can get the confident confidence to apply and to sit um, for the process, then I'll be really glad. That's all from my side. Yeah, that was that was really nice, man. And uh, to our viewers who are watching this thing, uh, this is where the podcast ends. 
बट देर विल बी अ पार्ट इन डिटेल पार्ट विच विल बी एडिंग टू दिस पॉडकास्ट वेयर शिवम पंत विल गिव अ पावर पॉइंट प्रेजेंटेशन of his project will give a demo of his project in the audio which is really cool i have seen it and i would say that it 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 blowed my mind right and then there will be some discussion about building a portfolio is it advisable or it is not advisable when you are studying in your bachelors or you are doing your post graduation will it help or not what are the tools what are the skill set which you need that it what it is about this podcast ends here but do see that later part because that is where the real insight lies thank you so much